Hello and welcome to the Daily Atheist Morning Show. It is Friday, finally Friday. We made it to Friday. Friday, March 20th, 2020. And you know, you're not going to believe this. I, <laughs> I, I have got Arn Ra on my show. The Arn Ra and Damian Marie at Hope are both on my show today. They're here. Um, Jim Majors is also going to be here. Maybe. Um, I screwed up. I've, I I've have to step out and apologize you, as we go through. You won't see Jim for a little bit, maybe, because I screwed up and didn't send him the links. No, he is not here yet. So, my fault. I have sent him the links. Hopefully, he'll join us. So, uh, real quick, let me introduce you to Damien Marie Adhope, my guest host. Hi. You guys have met him before. He helps me out on Fridays and Mondays, uh, guest host the show. And uh, we have <laughs> Aaron Ra. Now, he's just been lighting up the show, right? So, I created a special graphic for Arn Ra, and of course he probably can't see it, but hello everybody, how are you guys doing? Hey, hey. Good morning, Damien. And again, you know, I would introduce Jim, but man, I um, I forgot to send him the links. Let me confirm here that everybody can, I've been having some technical issues, I'm just making sure the chat's not saying they can, they can hear us all, so... That's wonderful. Damien, thank you for joining me again. Arn, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I, I kind of, I, I have a funny story real quick before we get started. I was going to tell Jim, Jim can watch this later. I, I sent out a tweet to everybody going, man, I got a hell of a show going on. I had Friday open and in there I thought, well, you know, I'll just say, you know, Arn Ra, you know. And so I said, what are you doing Friday, Arn Ra? And I sent out the tweet and... I didn't think nothing of it, but I had Friday to fill, right? And I ran into Jim and I invited Jim and Jim said, you know, he would come on the show. So I got Jim on the show and I agreed to have Jim on the show. Jim, wonderful guy, I guess. I don't know. He might be an ass. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so, and then Kristen, best name ever, the most wonderful person in the entire universe. She got with Arn and, you know, brought it to his attention that I had said the thing. And Arn said, sure, he'll be here. So now I got four people. And so normally I wouldn't have so many people <laughs> guests on my show. Um, but I'll have as many pets as you want. I don't know if he can hear it or not, but yes. Um, so that's, that's why we, everything is going all the hell and whack. And then Jim, of course, on top of everything, I forgot to send Jim the link. So it's all on me guys. So thank you all guys for joining me on the show. Arn, if you don't mind, would you, uh, introduce yourself to the people who, uh, who uh, surely everybody here knows you. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I'm a... Yeah, for the last several years, I've been a, uh, a secular activist. I am trying to gain some traction against uh, the religious right and their uh, and their uh, uh, their orchestrated attempts to uh, to fill every state and federal political office with right wing Christian dominionists, right. Christian nationalists, uh, to try to undermine everything that our First Amendment used to stand for. Yeah, and they've got quite a thing going. Um, I've been watching the. Uh... With American Atheist, I've been um, uh, we've been flirting with the idea of me um, joining the American Atheist, and they have brought to my attention some of the things going on with Project Blitz, um, <clears throat> and then you know, like uh, we also have the the thing going on in Kentucky where they're they're having the what do they call it? <clears throat> their right to not give somebody care based on their religious belief, and then Florida, the moment yep. of silence they're pushing on the kids. Because so. Christianity is all about discrimination yeah. and, and evading responsibility. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, it, and it's a sad thing that um, the, the Christians will say that the reason that we have freedoms is Christianity and then try to put in laws that actually remove the freedoms that they claim supposedly mm -hmm. came because of Christianity. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I often hear the thing that it's, it's freedom of religion for Christian religion. It's, yeah. You're, you're free to worship Jesus however you see fit. Right. You know, but that's only until everybody's Christian. And once everybody's Christian mostly, then it's how you worship. And then they start burning each other down for how they, what well, they've demonstrated throughout history, that they will kill each other <laughs> for the various differences. You mean Protestants and Catholics will actually oh, yeah. go to war with each other? You know, maybe. Well, hell, Protestants will go to war with Protestants. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean. Yeah, yeah they absolutely will. And so, it, 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 it's all tribalism. It's all about how, how divisive they can possibly be. Yeah. And that's why there's like 30,000 different denominations just of Christianity. And they are often violent against each other. And, and, and everybody's saying that all of the others are going to go to hell. 
And yeah. there's to be as many different versions of Christianity as there are people in the pews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but it's always the absolute truth for all of them. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how... Um... Oh, hell. Yeah, it's amazing how they all seem to have it to where they're the ones, they've got the answer, they're right, they know best. Um, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. it's a lot worse than that. I mean, I, I see all religions in general, just not, not just Christianity, but all of them seem to be all about lying. It's, mm -hmm. it's how well you can lie, how comfortable you can be at lying, and, and how confident you can sound when you are lying. For example, uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland who's a local Dallas minister, mm -hmm. who uh, a few years ago, he, he advised all of his congregation to be faith healed instead of inoculating their kids. So no, no, he's an anti-vaxxer, right? Tells, every, tells his congregation not to get vaccinations. He's going to faith heal them. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there was an outbreak of measles that was traced to his congregation. I remember. And now, uh, more recently, in the last week or so, he tried to, to cure people of coronavirus over the TV. Yeah. And the demand... He then demanded that all these people who are losing their job and losing their paycheck because they're now being forced to stay at home, that they should physically come to the church and slide their tithing under the door. And that they had better do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. tithing under the door. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, it's just amazing to me that they're all powerful. God needs money so bad. You know, you would think the interest alone on the money they have in the bank would be enough to... That, you know, they could just stop and still make money on the interest alone. <laughs> well, well, they have to, they have to buy them cars. They, they have to do God's work for exactly the reason that God can't do any work himself. Right. So that's why the Bible is very explicit in how to build the, the ark to put the animals in, how to build the ark to put the covenant in, how to build the tabernacle, and exactly what, si what type of fine threads and jewelry should be wo woven into Aaron's robes. Yeah, yeah. Because that, those things are important. No. Well, it's, what I've noticed is that God can create uh, planets and dinosaurs and everything that humans can't make, but he can't make anything humans can make. He can't make a bomb or a boat or a building or a book. He needs people to do all of these things, uh, just mm. exactly as if he wasn't really there. Huh, strange. Yeah. Well, and that, that includes Jesus, because supposedly Jesus came down and spent his 33 years of his life to just not write a book. I mean, not even write down a word. I mean, imagine that if you could actually believe that someone was a savior and planned all this and yet doesn't write anything. I mean, what kind of a <laughs> a story is that? Seriously. Yeah, the, the, the guy who atones for all our sins, and yet we still have sins. Hmm. And we're, <laughs> we're still going to hell unless we believe. But didn't he atone? What, what, what the hell did he do? Right. What was the mm -hmm. sacrifice all about? Right. You know, I read this beautiful joke, uh, and, and Christians won't get this because they don't understand mythology. They, you know, they, they, they think that Jesus was the only person that was ever crucified. They don't realize that Prometheus was crucified on this rock for like 10,000 years because, you know, he's immortal and therefore he's a god, so he doesn't die. Um, and that, that this vulture comes down and eats his liver every day, and his liver, of course, grows back because he's an immortal being. And so he spends 10,000 years in crucifixion, and so there's a god party. And Jesus shows up, and Prometheus is there, and Jesus tells uh, Prometheus about his three days in hell. Uh, and uh, Prometheus' response is, uh, wow, sounds like a bummer of a weekend, dude. Yeah, no doubt. Exactly. But yeah. what to me is what was weird is how come uh, the story isn't seen this terrible? Because in a sense, Jesus has to suffer for a God that can't forgive without torture. I mean... God's all about scapegoats, isn't he? Right. I mean, if a God, if God can do absolutely everything, why can't he do what I can do? Why can't he why can't he forgive without conditions? What is the why does he have all these conditions in his unconditional love? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I I, I got to do a self shill here. I'm doing a series called um, The Evil God Monster of Abraham. And that's where I go through. I'm going through the Bible chapter by chapter. I'm in Genesis 9, fixing to start working on Genesis 10. And um it, it, the whole purpose of this the, the series is to exemplify how the God of Abraham is just this horrible, disgusting creature. I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot. I've, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, no, i got to sit down and write another video. Okay. And I open up 
uh, Genesis on the internet and I, st- I just read through the, ch- the the current chapter. I'm like, oh man, this is easy. Look at this. This is horrible. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have different standards, right? I mean, I mean, I, there are other people that the that the religious right uh, also worship beyond God. And you can point out all of the uh, imperfections in this other false deity that they worship, and it doesn't matter, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if, it, if, it's, uh, if, if it's grabbing pussies, if it's, if it's bragging about sexual assault, if it's lying about having bone spurs that he didn't really have, it doesn't matter what, all, that everything he ever did in his life was dishonest and stupid. Both. It doesn't matter, all these things. Hmm. Yeah, they're still yeah. going to worship. So it doesn't matter what what you come up with, God, right? It doesn't matter how bad God is because the the, the other God they worship is just as bad, right? And, and it seems like almost for the same reason they think that their their sky God is going to send people to hell, and then they think that their their terrestrial Trump God is somehow going to put liberals through hell. <laughs> and it went that way. <laughs> 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 we were doing so good. <laughs> no, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I've, I've lost family and friends over over not 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 no over religion so much. It's like everybody that I knew that that, that still believed in God could still forgive me mm-hmm. for being an atheist. That wasn't a huge problem. But when I didn't worship the orange God, that's when all communication ties yeah. had to, had to fail. That's that's when family and and you know, decades of friendship didn't matter anymore. Hmm. Yeah. I blocked a bunch of people. If they say they're a Trump supporter, I just block them. I obviously, because to me, I, I like people that are humanist. So when I see you support this monster of an anti-humanist type of a person, I, I just I can't respect you. I mean, I, I don't I don't care to know you. Well, I didn't want to make this about politics. We were just talking about how people <laughs> will not view the God of the Bible as being evil, despite the fact that absolutely everything he does. Sure. is evil that's right i've said right. and it's, it's much like the other god they worship same thing oh yeah 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 i've said it so over- god has a has a d- discussion with abraham and and this is a god that is supposed to be all powerful all knowing right he's all mm-hmm. wise he knows the past present and future he knows everything that you're thinking before you think it depending on who and you are. yet <laughs> abraham is able to barter him down well what if there's only 10 <laughs> right yeah. well, what if there's only right. five yeah, right, right. So he's Abraham is negotiating with what appears to be a five year old, mm-hmm. and and that's that's the God we're supposed to worship. And what's the God going to do? Why is it he being uh, bartered down? Because God doesn't know how to teach anybody anything. Right. He doesn't know how to impart moral values. No. All he knows how to do is kill people when he's angry. That's it. Yeah. That's all. Nothing else. Right. Let's go stomping through and kill them all. Yep. Oh well, yeah, there, there, there's even a, a verse where, where they try to take um, like uh, incense up to the, the the volcano or whatever or to where God is, <laughs> and then they're all burned alive. I mean, <laughs> what kind of a God is that? Like, yeah, all right. Well, you know, I recently read that story, and I, I thought it was funny because I'm again I'm working on the evil God monster of Abraham series. I, I love that. I love saying it like that. Anyway, I was I've been working on that, and so I went and read that, and I think it's funny in that this story. He says he works him down to ten. Can you get me ten people? If I can get you ten good people, will you spare the town? He says, if you can find me ten good people, I will spare the town. So they go in there, they find Lot, Lot's two daughters. That's three, and then their husbands. We assume they are all decent people, and that was they found. We let I, I'm going on that, and it's Lot's wife, so that's six people that we assume they were, you know, going to take out of there, and they consider six people good enough. And in all that town, it doesn't even seem like they even bothered to look. You know, it never says we looked to see if we could find any more good people. No, it's like we just went and got our got their shit and got them out. No, 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 no. And then God's standards are really, really low, too. I mean, it's a dark thing, right? The most righteous guy in the world there, Noah, and then we do the Sodom and Gomorrah thing, the most righteous guy there, Lot. Both of them, naked old drunks cursing their own kids, right? I mean, yeah. that, that, that was Noah's deal. And then Lot's was even worse because when his wife was conveniently removed from the equation, uh, yeah. then... 
he gets drunk and molests his own children and then blames them and blames right. them yes right. so it's we know that it's not possible for a heterosexual man to be so drunk that he doesn't know that's his daughter he's screwing right and still be physically able to perform the act that's an elderly man right so that there's there's no way that 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 works yeah so wow. if you're capable of believing that the daughters seduced their got their father drunk to seduce him for that reason wow. then of course you're dumb enough to believe that the entire world was flooded or that snakes talk right yeah, yeah exactly and, and, and also that it wasn't like if you in logically that everybody who has sex one time gets pregnant i mean right. we know that people try for years sometimes to get pregnant so right. the fact that the both daughters got pregnant, I mean, logically means more than one time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I would like to tell, throw my two cents in on all this because I've again, I've been down this road recently. Um, so, Wait, lot, are you sure you've been down this road? No, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, Lot and his he's picking on me because I'm short, right? Um, <laughs> lot and his daughters. So he claimed, so he, first of all, he was an old man, so old that he told the angels who were sent to the messengers or whatever, that he couldn't make it to the mountains, which he eventually made it to, right? So he was so old, he, he was elderly when he got there. So he was ancient in age. And then they got him so drunk on wine that he couldn't remember or didn't know it was his daughters he was having sex with. And then he, he was able to, barring those two things, he was able to get it up. So, and then produce. Okay, so now we got to look at something else in the Bible. In the Bible, in, the, in sequence. What well, right? Girls back to back. Back to back. I'm getting yes, absolutely. Now, in the in the, in the Old Testament, in order to have to conceive a child, it is already established that only the Lord allows that to happen because Abram and Sarai have been have been trying to get pregnant. Or, or one of them, I don't remember exactly which. They've been trying to, and it says only the Lord will allow. And we know that in the Old Testament, the th the reward from heaven is a long life, and um, to uh, be the son, have uh, children who are the fathers of nations, to have your lineage go on and be the father of a nation. So Lot, at barring these three, he's ancient, he's drunk, um, he doesn't know how, and, and he can still get the thing up. He has sex once each time with each daughter, and each daughter bears a son which it means it's 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 approved by God and those children go on to be the fathers of nations. So this is ultimate approval by the Lord of Abraham for what has happened here. There's no more reward you could have gotten for Lot in that than his children going on to be the fathers of nations. You know what what amazes me most about this religion? A horrible example. Is is not how how stupid they all are. It's not how silly, ridiculous, or whatever that these all are. It's when I get people to admit to me that they're going to believe it anyway, even if they know it's not true. Yeah. I don't know if you've you've heard that, but I've oh, heard it my, multiple my mom times. Said that to me. Yeah. What's that? My mom said it to me when I first almost you know was just considering becoming an atheist. I, I kind of stopped believing. But I called her and asked her about stuff I had learned in school. I said, well, the they showed us that the Lucifer was never connected to the Bible, that, that people that do that are a mistranslation of the King James Bible. I said, it's even in your Bible concordance that says that that's so. And so she went and looked, and then she's like, well, yeah, it says that, but I'm still going to believe. And I was like, whoa, I'm not doing that. Oh, man, that's what I, that's actually made me a stronger atheist because I thought, wow, I don't want to be her. Yeah. I don't want to look right at the facts and go, I'm going to believe lies. I was like, wow. So, so my favorite of all these admissions was, I mean, I, I've heard it phrased many ways. I mean, one of them was, you know, like, well, these may be what the facts are, but I prefer to believe this, <laughs> which, which right. kind of matches what you just said. But yeah. One of my favorite ones was uh, giving a hypothetical situation to this, this girl. I've said, okay, you have, a, you have a time machine, you're like a TARDIS, right? You go back in time and you see, you, you, you somehow are able to find a Jesus, which I don't think anyone ever could. You find Jesus, you watch him crucified, and then you watch his body rot for a week and he never gets up. Right. What, what would be your response to that? And her, her response was, I know you're going to be disappointed in my answer, but I hope that my faith is strong enough to keep believing anyway. Yeah. 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 No, thank you. We see that in cults, you know, that kind of thing in cults. I really, real quick, I want to shout out to the, to the chat. I, you know, I was so excited about having 
uh, my guests on today that I forgot to shout out to the chat. I've got lots of people in the chat, too many to actually mention um, and, and be polite about it. But best name ever has asked, uh, I need to ask Arn Ryan just a second a question for best name ever. And Paul Kamish said something earlier. Um, he said, how can God get pissed off? He already knew what was going to happen. In all those instances where we were talking about God being enraged, Paul wanted to inject that. That's kind of a good point. And then real quick, back to, uh, of course, hi, everybody in the chat. Sorry if I miss you. Uh, Math pig, human, uh, all you wonderful peoples. But best name ever wants to know, how was Arn's trip to South Africa? And uh, if you, me and Damien are going to do the ta atheist tattoo power rager thingy, I know what she's talking about. Um, so we'll get to the tattoo thing first. How was your trip, Arn? Or oh, later? Well. Yeah, that that was that was interesting. I say I think it was a total of three weeks because it takes two days to fly there and two days to fly back. Um, yeah, yeah. I wish I could have bought the ticket because if I had been able to pay for the the ticket myself, it would have been only forty dollars more, and I would have been able to spend eleven hours in Zurich, and that would have been nice because yeah. it was during the day. I would get out of the airport at like ten thirty, and I had to be back at the airport at like you know at at nine or ten something like that. But I would have the whole day in Zurich, Switzerland, and there was a half a dozen people that said that we they would take me out to to, to some place where I can get a shower and then we do lunch, we do you know, we do we do dinner, we go see things and we, we talk and get on video and have have interviews and everything. That was gonna be really good. But I couldn't do that and so the the school was financing the trip and they booked me a flight through Doha, Qatar. And uh, that was I would rather not be in Qatar again, but it it's okay. I you know, have to go there and then fly, it's like uh, 17 hours and then nine hours. And so that's, and that's without a shower. So you can imagine what, what that feels like. Yeah. And, and then going out, once I was act, actually out in the bush, cause it was a 12 hour drive from Johannesburg out to where, uh, up to this very remote desert area where if I get up on a high mountain, I could almost get cell service. I mean, I could make a phone call mm -hmm. if, if I, climb a mountain I could, I could do that but i can't get internet <laughs> oh, oh, okay. most because it's very very remote place and uh what we would have to do is get up at five in the five o'clock in the morning to go off in, into the desert we would be you know like dropped off in some remote wilderness area and we would stay there until five o'clock in the evening wandering around the desert with walkie talkies to keep in touch with each other as we all look for fossils there was 10 of us awesome. out in this expedition so imagine if the, the first couple of hours are okay, but the last couple of hours it's up to 40 degrees Celsius. So it's like 102. And it, it just, just to be out in the, out in the sun all day like that, wandering up and down hills and jagged rocks and everything. It, that, that was a little tiring. <laughs> I had to carry six liters of water on me and I would still be out, you know, by, by the time I got to the end of the day. Really? Yeah, and uh, I didn't find many fossils. I felt <clears throat> embarrassed. I did. I did have one very productive day. I got to the the, the top of this ridge, very high, the, the highest area that I could get to around me, and I surveyed the place and I I saw a siltstone deposit that was away away from everywhere else that were, where nobody else was uh, exploring. So everything that I had been finding, or everything that they'd been finding up to that point, had always been in these siltstone deposits. So that's where I went, and I found a boneyard. Oh, really? cool. I was feeling completely uh, superfluous because everybody was every everybody else besides me was a PhD and and they're they're finding stuff everywhere we go and I hadn't found squat yet, not one actual bone and to make it worse I kept finding things that were not bone that I thought was bone and I would show it to somebody and say no that's a rock, and <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> but then I get I get to this one area that I surveyed, and uh, feeling very frustrated like why am I even here. And I, I finally picked up this one rock that it was a it was a black rock and it had a, an unusual shape to it. So maybe, and as I turned it over and looked, I, I saw the the sponge texture that you get from from bony cells. Right. And and, and I realized I'm holding a vertebrae. Cool. And and suddenly I got very excited. I finally found an actual bone, and within within an hour, I had a couple dozen bones. Hmm. Uh, it, it, ribs and femurs and and oh, uh, more vertebrae uh, and even the brain case I found a brain case a very highly detailed brain case but unfortunately the the muzzle part was it wasn't a complete skull it was just the back of the skull but it was very detailed and very and I thought very beautiful 
And one of the things that I had in my hand was a, a vertebrae about this big for Titanosuchus, or what we believe was a Titanosuchus, because it was it was so huge. The vertebrae was so huge that it had to belong to like the biggest thing that was in the area at that time. And the strata that we were we were working at was dated to 262 million years. Oh, really? So we knew we're not going to find dinosaurs here. Wow. You know, yeah. we're, we're not going to find. We're certainly not going to find mammals. Everything right. that we were going to find is either going to be a parasaur or it was going to be a therapsid. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, I bet it was. I, I kind of kept up with it on the Facebooks, and uh, it, it seemed like you know. I mean, you show pictures of you sleeping under a bush and those kind of things, and it reminded me a lot of West Texas. I'm from West Texas, so <laughs> yeah. The, the slight difference is uh, it, the the most dangerous thing that I came across. I mean, there were there's snakes, of course, and uh, I, I found. A number of leopard tortoises and stuff like that but the only the only dangerous thing that really came across was there was these two things that i get up on top of a hill and i see these two things running really fast and i'm trying to tell from this great distance what they are uh and i would have guessed that they were wolves had i been on another continent but but it they couldn't be wolves here and then it, 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 it took some time to me to piece together they were baboons Oh, wow. really? Yeah, and they were they were moving at speed. I mean, these things were fast. Wow. And the surprising thing was, as I'm watching this, I'm looking down in the valley, and there's there's my team of people that are working around this fossil that they're excavating. I'm surveying the surrounding area to see where I want to go, and I see these two baboons run right past my team, right behind them. And somehow these guys didn't notice the baboons running right behind them. Mm -hmm. But I, when I but the what, the thing that alarmed me was the size of these things. So yeah. they're like as big as some people, you know, big as a small person, but right. there's two of them. They're both male. And um, at being that fast and that silent kind of alarmed me a little bit. Well, aren't they stronger yeah. anyways than a, than a human? Yeah, fortunately, uh, uh, baboons are not really interested in attacking people most of the time. But I had been warned. I was supposed to, the original plan was that I was supposed to go to Cape Town. Uh, and I ended up having to, to scratch Cape Town off of the off of the, the tour because it would have meant abandoning the expedition, and I didn't want to do that. But I had been told that there are baboons living in Cape Town, and there's places in Cape Town where baboons are allowed to be. And they said that uh, if a baboon takes something from you, don't try to get it back. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that I have an idea how big these things are... <laughs> You're like, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> and I already know what their teeth look like. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a, a monkey mated with a lion. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them, what I've seen on the, yeah, I'm allergic to their saliva. I can guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> this woman was telling me she was, she was from Cape Town and she said, she told me this very alarming story that she's sitting in traffic one day and a baboon opened her car door and sat in the seat next to her, closed the door. And sat in the seat next to her and looked at her. And she didn't know how to respond. So he grabbed her bag, opened the car door, and got out of the car with her bag. Really? So wow. yeah, they've lived in the city for a while. They're smart. They learn how to open and close doors. Yeah. So that's wild. <laughs> how Pretty soon they'll be using stone tools, right? <laughs> <laughs> Making their own. <laughs> Yeah. Which surprise. makes me wonder, I mean, whether you're ever going to have a second ascension of species based on the coattails of the first. No, well, I, I, I think that it is possible that uh, apes and stuff or monkeys, somebody, you know, goes into the Stone Age. I, I don't think it's impossible at all. Well, no, I, they're already doing that. We've, we've found uh, you know, chimpanzees making stone tools and such. I mean, so that, that, that's happening. But what, but what I meant by that is not that it could, could happen, but it becomes a, a thing where they start doing that in general. Like all of them start, you know, just like there's evidence, you know, before of, mm -hmm. you know, massive use and continual use. Not, but I know because monkeys, I know it, it, even some other um, um, apes and stuff and, or um, – baboons i know they can learn from their environment so they can learn be taught like if one learns how they can teach others but but if that becomes pervasive is what i meant like all of them start doing it i, I don't think that's an impossibility you know Maybe evolution can happen again yeah what I, what I was hoping was that when you have this uh this, this established civilization that other animals would adapt to that and uh and and ascend their intelligence based on it 
but we would have to have something where uh, it's selective for intelligence that would aid that in happening. Like in cities where you have a monkey population, like like Langers in India, for example. Yeah. The downside is that we don't have these pe- the people and monkeys living side by side with mutual respect for each other. I mean, where you might have that is like uh, in, in um, uh, Gibraltar, the, the what they call the Barbary apes, which are actually right. attacks, right? Those will mill about through a crowd of people, and as long as you don't touch them, then you're fine. But but the, the, I tried to take a picture of this one monkey in, in Agra in India, and the monkey got really upset at me at me pointing a camera at her. I mean, she's she's like ready to rip my face off only because I'm pointing. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. so so monkeys in India they they they're all about crime. So there's a lot of uh, mugging and theft and and that sort of thing that they do, and they're, they're, they're we don't have as yet any kind of a balance for how to select. Uh, how, how do I even put this? Monkeys that want to be mutually respectful. Right. <laughs> there's, there's not a societal situation where we can cohabitate this way without, you know, deliberately antagonizing each other. And I was hoping it wouldn't be monkeys. Would be I was hoping it would be something else. I was hoping it would be like a raccoon, right? That raccoons yeah. would would uh, develop some urban skills. The, the sad thing is, is that raccoons, strangely, uh, I asked this one geneticist at a conference why it was that we have raccoons in North America. We have raccoons across uh, Northern Asia, and they seem to be the same. I mean, you've got, you've got something slightly different in South America. You've got, I, I forget, what Cota Mundi is basically a variant of a raccoon. But otherwise, in the Northern Hemisphere, raccoons are the same all the way around the world. And I asked, why is that? And he said that, that what, the, what they had noticed was that raccoons had a remarkably low mutation rate such that they don't evolve. Mm. So that they are basically karyotypic of procyonids. They are procyonids, but they're, kary- they're karyotypic of the ancestor of dogs, bears, and weasels. So raccoons have changed very little, very little. in the last 10 million years at least. Yeah. I just want to introduce Jay real quick, my my friend from the Nevermore um, Tavern channel. Uh, I asked him to step in while, since Jim Majors couldn't join us or didn't join us, my fault again, totally my fault. But Jay's going to step in for a little while. Hi, Jay. How are you doing today? I'm good. How about yourself? Doing good. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Didn't mean to interrupt your iron. Carry on with your with y'all's visit. I was a little embarrassed because... Uh... Mine is the wimpiest beard in the room, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and mine's not well, for the first time. You know, it, it's funny because I always say I have the third best hair on YouTube. The only two people that beat out me is you and uh, Neil the 604 Atheist. So, mm. you know, yeah, yeah, he has an awesome name. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, so like, you know, so it was like, you know, I'm. There's only two other people with better hair than me. <laughs> and here, now we're, there's two of them. So the only yeah. one we're missing is Neil. Yeah, if we can and get Neil. we have Neil the best hair on, on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have much of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Damien. We were, we were. <laughs> so, Jay, uh, I've been rambling for a while. What's your story? Uh, well, I used to be known as End the Conspiracy, um, and I did a whole bunch of different things back then. But as of the basically the turning of the new year, I've I've um, switched over to different a uh, format of style. Now I, I do interviews with people, um, get to know the per the person uh, behind the YouTube more. Um, that you know I do meet and greets. Um, I, I'm starting on, on hosting debates, you know things like that. So I'm branching out a little more. Um, right now I do have a couple of, of series. I've got one on on symbols. Um, That's a good show. The, yeah, the, the the background on symbols, and then um, I'm also doing a series of videos on serial killers. So that's basically me in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been doing this for about a year. Um, actually, you were one of the first people I started watching in the atheist community, mm-hmm. so to speak, um, way back a, a year ago. So it's actually you know full circle a year later now i actually get to 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 meet you in person it's really an honor for me thank you very much uh thank you um when i 
when I first started, okay, so I, I actually didn't get to properly introduce myself. I, you know, I do a series, several different series of videos, Quickie with the Skeptic, uh, Evil God Monster of Abraham. I also have this show. This show wouldn't be here had it not been for Jay and Chris, the atheist pastor, and all of those friends, Math Pig, all those people. You pro you'll probably get invites from at least a couple of them. All of them are content creators. All of them do something similar. And had it not been for those awesome, awesome, wonderful people, um, this show wouldn't be here at all. I appreciate. It. I wish I could get them all on at once. I. I, I just can't. I'm sorry. I couldn't. All you friends out there who are watching, I wish I could have gotten you on. I just, I just can't. Real quick question for you, Aaron, from the from the chat. Somebody in the chat, Link Thomas, uh, kind of he he wants to know what your favorite metal band is. You kind of look like a metal person to him, and he's a fellow metal person, and he wants to know what your favorite band is. Well, I, I it, it's always been Black Sabbath, but. Okay. Uh, I, and and I want to say Motorhead, except that Motorhead refused to identify as metal. Okay. You know, Lemmy always said that we play rock and roll, hmm. both hmm. kinds of music. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, but but now that neither of those are a thing anymore, I have to to look elsewhere. And so I think uh, in this moment, at at this moment, okay. <laughs> is uh, is probably my favorite band. And there's a number of other like black metal bands that I'm quite fond of. Uh, most of the ones, strangely, that have a female vocalist, there's just something about when you get a woman that can roar like that. Mm. And I, I just find that fascinating. I haven't seen a lot of those. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to look into them. You know, I've been well, so busy doing a good the example channel. of that would be like Archangel, for okay. example, or Ginger. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh, it, the, the videos for like Archangel, you get a woman who looks amazing, mm. and then she's and and so she's every, every bit feminine, but then she also roars. Like, like, <laughs> like and uh, Ginger, the, the vocalist, is quite astounding because she she can both sing and roar. Mm. Really, and it comes off very well. Do you like Otep? That's got a female singer. Uh, yeah, uh, she's a. Uh, She's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I, I like her a lot. Uh, um, just the, the the power that she exudes is quite impressive. Yes. Um, Aaron, Aaron, I'm sorry. Uh, I've seen pictures of you when you were young, and you look very similar than you that you look now. Were you always? Um, because I'm not no, no, really. No. I, I I was I was good looking then. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> and he's writing down that's the last time i'm going to be on his show <laughs> no um yeah how long have you been doing the atheist activism is it have you always been an atheist did you have a coming out story of course neil the 604 atheist you know him he gets on to me if i ask too many how you became an atheist questions he'll he'll verbally assault me in the chat if i do that <laughs> Um, well, for a long time, I mean, it's kind of an embarrassing story, and I've told it many times, but I'll give you a quick summary. I, I was a child in the, the early 70s in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, I grew up mostly in and around L.A. at a time when, you know, like, there's hippie spiritualism. So I was, I was taught all kinds of woo, and, we, and, and I was taught, you know, my, my family taught me that... Uh, that skeptics were cynics who were missing out on the big picture that only true believers could understand. So it didn't occur to me that what they were taught, what they were doing was promoting make believe. Yeah. And that that's really what faith was, was make believe. I didn't, I didn't get that. I was, I was taught all these spiritual things about trying to, you know, like reading auras, for example, was, was just with training yourself to see just beyond what your eyes could physically see, which means make shit up. Right. But I didn't realize that yet. So I was never, I was Christian because I was taught that, you know, that, 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 that Jesus and God was a conclusively proven scientific fact. I didn't realize I'd been lied to. Um, but I, I was never a creationist and I never believed in Jesus on faith. I just, you know, believed what I was told. And I was, I was, I was told that it would be, that it was uh, as absurd to question the existence of God as it would be to question whether we really have a president. You know, that, that both would be like conspiratorial kind of thinking. And then as I grew up, when I was a, a as a teenager, I remember having a rebirth in Christ moment. And that, that cured me really, because 
uh, my best friend in high school at that time, who is now a fundamentalist Baptist preacher. I, when I had this rebirth experience, I'm like wandering around in elation and, and euphoria. And I finally pulled my senses together enough to ask this guy, how do I know that, the, that what I'm feeling is really the power of Jesus and that I'm not you know, that it's not demons or that I'm not fooling myself some way. And right. so he, he grabs me by both shoulders and just and with this huge beaming smile says, just keep telling yourself it's Jesus until you believe it. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know truth. Yeah, so he was one of those fake it till you make it kind of make believers. So uh, that, that, that his, his sentiment was so incredibly dishonest that that was my last instant as a Christian. And uh, in my evaluation of religion thereafter, I pretty I lost God pretty quickly. The concept of a of a God just didn't make any sense to me. I, however, I still believed in supernatural things as to, because I thought there was evidence of it. I had been raised with all kinds of uh, pseudoscience documentaries. I thought that there was evidence for psionic uh, aptitude, you know, like uh, telepathy and uh, and and. Uh, what what is it? Uh, ESP. No, no, telekinesis and a number of other things. I thought that there was evidence for these things because I was given all this pseudoscience stuff on TV, right? And you know, you, you know, it had to be real because you saw it on TV. Yeah, there's a video. Yeah, and so I started investigating all of these things, and eventually, one by one, all these things that I used to believe in fell away. Until uh, the the one thing that held me together was that the, the scientific evidence of life force or soul. And that was Curly in Photography. And I watched this thing called uh, In Search Of that was hosted by Leonard Nimoy like in 1974 when I was 12. And it's Leonard Nimoy, right? Everything he says sounds logical. Of course. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> he's giving a, a presentation on to Curly in Photography. You take a leaf and you put it between these photoelectric plates. And the, the photoelectric plates takes a picture of the electrical field rather than a regular photograph. And you see this leaf, and it's a, it's made out of phosphorescent blue sparks, and you can see all the veins in the leaf and the texture and everything. And then they cut the leaf in half, and they take the picture again. And at first, you only see the half the leaf that you would expect to see, but then on an overexposure, you get to see the other half of the leaf, too. And that was proof that it was a life force there. At least it was to my 12-year-old mind when I think I'm watching a science documentary. <clears throat> so... As an adult, we get the internet. One of the first things I look up is like, hey, I want to see what uh, what they found, at, if, what, what's the advances in Curly and photography since that time. And the first thing I come across was Leonard Nimoy admitting that that everything that they did in that show was, was bullshit just for entertainment purposes. Really? Yeah. Really? Right away, I find that admission. And I'm like, so that was the thing. That ended mm -hmm. up being like the last linchpin that there was a supernatural at all, hmm. anything, and that went away. And it was that was. Then I went to uh, talk to uh, an author, like the same day, I, that I had this scheduled interview with this author, and I, I was asking him about this, and he said that, that, that you're an atheist. Hmm. And up until that time, I thought that I'd always accepted all these lies about what an atheist is. That, that an atheist right. is supposed to know that there's no God. That an atheist believes in nothing. Uh, not not believe in anything, but believes in nothing, which is a different context. Right. That, that all all these impossible things that were that, that an atheist had a completely uh, unreasonable position. I didn't realize that what an atheist really was and and already was from the time the word was invented until before Huxley invented his word agnostic. The word always originally meant that somebody who who uh, lacked a belief in theism. Right. Mm -hmm. still right. The first use of the word, the first use of the word was was uh, the Romans criticizing the Christians because they just made up a religion like just 20 minutes ago. They didn't have these thousands of years of established theology. So that's what they were making fun of. They, they called the Christians atheists mm -hmm. because they lacked their their theism. They just right. they, they're, they're worshiping a guy who was supposedly just killed. Right as opposed to to god so that's what the first application of that word and later it simply became anybody who is not convinced that an actual deity really exists mm -hmm. and ultimately that's the only that's the only definition that works because mm -hmm. uh, in in all of the ideology you go you go to uh, you die you're supposed to go to, to to the pearly gates and everything and there's this one question 
did you believe yes or no right you believe in god okay you can be forgiven if you didn't believe in god you can't be forgiven that's it i would love to see the agnostic up there trying to justify his but well i didn't believe in god but i didn't not believe in god right. either right. and then you know uh, saint peter would be well that means you didn't believe in god go to hell Boom. <laughs> <laughs> So there's absolutely no purpose for you pretending to be this middle of the road fence sitter, you, you undecisive piece of shit. <laughs> See, and, and, and Chris thinks it was only me that's like an anti-agnostic. No, <laughs> no <it's laughs> that Captain Honey is also an anti-agnostic, or at least not agnostic. Right. Well, okay. All right. Mine's more complicated than that. I I, I say that just to avoid fights. I don't want to waste my time debating over what's an agnostic and what's an atheist. I just say, okay, I'm this. Fine, let's move on. I really, real quick, I want to say uh, Neil has shown up because he does that uh, like a stalker. And he has noticed he's not really sure if Aaron is really Aaron. He wants to know who you are and what you've done with Aaron Ra because you don't have a beer in your hand. And if you don't have a beer in your hand, you can't possibly be Aaron Ra. Point made. I'm just saying. Okay, well, need I point out that it's like not even 9 a.m. See, yeah, see, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel you. Okay, all right. So I'll let you slide on that one, and then uh, yeah, somebody I'll, else. Well, well, I'll, I'll cover for you because I have a beer. It's 9 a.m., but I work third shift, so it's actually 9 p.m. for me. Ah, I see. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. All right, you win. You win. Um, also, I've got. Um, you know, I wrote it down. I don't know who I asked. I'm sorry. I think it was Granny. No, it was Paul. Paul. Paul Camish would like to know how you met your wife. Did you convert how, how her I first? Met my wife? Yeah, Miss Lilaran. Le, 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 let me see oh, if I. Lilandra. Yeah, that, that, that's an amusing story. Yes. Did you convert um, her, or how'd that work? Yeah, she was she was an old Earth creationist. Uh, she oh, she really? had young children at that time, and uh, she was living in West Texas then. And they there were like no social circles, and the only like uh, meetup group that they had online was like the friends of Mike Huckabee. Oh. So extremely <laughs> right wing extremist religion. And so she was just looking for like um, intelligent human conversation. And so being she was working in a Christian school at that time, uh, she gets on Christian forums to have discussions with people from, you know, to her own home. I get on Christian forums because I was chasing down bullshit arguments and there were a lot of them coming from there. So I end up in Christian forums arguing with her. And I told her that I could prove that evolution was a thing, that, it, that, that to her satisfaction, that, that evolution is real and true or whatever, or that, you know, that, that, that it actually happens. The truest, best explanation there is for the origin of our species, the only one with evidentiary support or scientific validity, that, that kind of thing. And whereas every time I make this, this uh, challenge, the, the person that, that I'm facing usually disappears. There's I'm only sorry. been like a dozen times that somebody takes takes the offer and then they vanish right, right. as soon as they, they realize that I'm making sense. Suddenly there's no more communication. And with her, she was the only person that ever went all the way through it. She went to fruition. And uh, I convinced her that evolution was real and that totally ruined her life. Hmm. Because she was working in a Christian school. So of course she got fired. Right. She, she wasn't a creationist anymore. Right. Uh, you, you can't be accepting scientific truth and, you know, and, and believe in God truth because one of them isn't truth at all. Right. And so then there, there, there was, there was social issues and her husband was trying to pretend to be some evangelical okay. uh, religious extremist. And, and so there was the, the whole world, her whole world kind of collapsed simply because she wasn't a, a religious extremist anymore really yeah so pretty quickly too. she ends up you know fired and divorced and all like that and ends up with me as as the only person she could go to and um she started making me a better person as soon as she got a hold of me and then that's kind of where that went so yeah she she fixed you too huh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I was a bit of a dick back then. <laughs> back then, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was not the charming sheriff you see before you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me too. People, people think now that I'm all about kindness. Yeah, I was in violence and stuff, so it was definitely my wife's kindness that helped me be more kind. Um, 
I wrote a I wrote a sci-fi book. I've got my own sci-fi universe. I haven't published the book yet. I've got two more planned. I've got all blah, 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 blah. When I first started writing, it was like atheists take up and they go away. They go colonize somewhere else, you know, the moon or something. I don't want to get into it. They, 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 but the atheists get up. And my, well, I was writing it. The second chapter, this guy comes out and he's like, this is why we're leaving. Because you guys suck. Because these people kill these people. And these kill and my wife, who I newly married, was still a Christian. Now, if you go read the manuscript, it's much, much softer. A lot less anti-Christian. Because <laughs> I was just raging. I was telling, look at this person just killed this group of people over here. And look at these people beheading the you know, Islam and everything. So yeah, kind of. She 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 fixed me, made me almost normal. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's 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 a thing on us to feel like we we would be better if we did leave, but actually we're better if we stay. It's better if we interact with these people that are that are you know theists mm -hmm. and you know help them get out of it. So in your in your notion, you you said you had your own universe. Mm hmm. Uh, and and I, I often argue with uh, idealists, which I, I find completely annoying. They, 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 they say that nothing exists except God, uh -huh. which means that we are not even real. Okay. We, we are just figments of God's imagination. Okay. <laughs> and somehow they want to say that even though God imagined us, and God knows what we're going to do before we do it, so we don't have any choice in the matter. Okay. Uh, and we will cease to exist when God wakes up, I guess. Um Depending on depending on which interpretation of idealism you like, then I have, I have to wonder: Do the people in your uh, universe that you made up do they have free will? Well, you know, um, my universe is uh, you know I hadn't really put that kind of thought into it. It's um, I guess they don't. If you I, I create their will, exactly. it depends on how you mean it. The, the way I looked at it is, is God is uh, God is Rod Serling. Okay. He wrote yeah. episodes of Twilight Zone. He knows what's going to happen before it happens. He wrote the story, right? So he right, knows right. the bad guy, or or that the people who are who are selfish and cruel, they're going to get their just result, just just desserts in the end, right? So he's he's constructed it that way, right. and he existed before he put the before he put he put the video on, you know, maybe he did it back in the days of VHS tapes before he puts the tape in the VCR. Mm -hmm. He, he already existed. He continues to exist after it's over. So he is beyond the time right. of, of, of all of the episodes. And he's decided he knows what's going to happen. So if you can't play it any differently, then you don't have free will. How could you? Right. If we can do, if we can do, if we can be prophetic, if God can know what we're going to do before we do it, then we can't surprise him. There's or no make him angry. In our faith. Look how many times God does something to test somebody right. as if he didn't already know. Absolutely. Now, either God doesn't already know or he's just being a dick. It's a trap. I wish I had an it's a trap graphic to just pop up there. It's a trap. Yeah, he's yeah. a dick. <laughs> I mean, <that's, laughs> we, we don't need to analyze it too deeply. I mean, if, yeah. if, if the Bible person is not a dick, then I don't think that the word is, is accurate. I mean, that, yeah. how, how so. Yeah. When we meet God, he's, he's going to be the smarmy guy with the Brill Cream style hairdo who says, imagine if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A world run by a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I have a problem, though, with, with, the, with the idea of a really, truly malevolent God being real, because yeah. wouldn't a malevolent God then show himself? And then enjoy the terror of the actual reality of existing. Well, the, the only problem that I have with the with the God characters, I could easily imagine a God conceiving the universe, right? Let let let's just give all the pull out all the stops and imagine that, that we are all imagined out of nothing. We are all okay. a dream of Brahma. Okay. God made us all up, and 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 so the only thing that exists is the is the mind of God and so forth. And the the, the problem is when God wants to sort us out to either give us the impossible promise of a posthumous reward or the threaten us with a fate worse than death if we don't believe. That's the part that does not make any sense. Yeah, I, so, I agree. Uh, so help, if, help. Even if a God exists, evolution is still true, the Bible is still false. All of the holy books are still false. 
right. there still is no heaven and hell. There still is no judgment of morality. Uh, God does not care if you believe in him or not, because why would a God care if you believe in him? If he wanted you to believe, he knows how to do that. He knows how to convince us. He knows how to show up, right? He knows how to write his message in space for all of us to see in whatever language. He would have given us in a Bible, he would have, he would, there would have been things in the Bible. The things in the Bible would not be there. Instead, there would be all kinds of instructions telling us about what microorganisms are and what's the sure. importance of washing your hands and purifying your water. These sorts of things would be in, in, in our Bible instead of all this shit that is in there. Uh, and so there, there's still no truth to any religion if there is a God. Um, Godless Granny from the chat would like to ask, she has a channel too. Most, a lot of the people in the, uh, that I have in my channel have, or in my chat have channels, but Godless Granny would like to know if you and the missus made it to Incest and Genocide Park for the ARC protest. Uh, I, my wife did not go this last time, but I did. Gotcha. And I, I still intend to go this year, depending on how much of the world is left after the plague. Right, right, yeah. I'm rooting for it, hopefully. Build the channel, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I talked to somebody yesterday. I, I was, uh, there's, there's a, a celebrity in, in the UK uh, that I wanted to get um, both to speak at American Atheist and also wanted to get an interview with her the next time I'm, I'm in her country. And I'm, I'm like, I'm going to be there in September, you know, because my trip was canceled, postponed, re relocated. And she's saying that she does, she's not going to make any plans right now, not until she knows how this awful pandemic plays out. Yeah. Hmm. I, I don't know how to, how to address that either. Um, this is an interesting time. This is certainly unprecedented. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm in, in one of those situations where, where my job doesn't depend on tips. Right. You know, that I'm, that I'm not like somebody in that case. I mean, when I was a laborer, I used to work for a bricklayer, and I used to get paid in cash daily. Yeah. And, and what kind of protection are there for people like that, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. So I, I, I feel for people in a very trying situation. And it really frustrates me in these times that we have the religious right. There's two things, both things that, that, that the religious people are doing. One of them is when they close down their faith healing sessions, because of the coronavirus yeah that's hilarious yeah which that, that's just an open admission that they know they're full of shit they mm -hmm. know that it's all about pretend that they're yeah. just make-believers and there's no truth to what they believe but they're going to believe it anyway because they're, they're, they are make-believers they are pretenders mm -hmm. and then we have the other ones that are far worse the people like kenneth copeland who i just mentioned and a handful of others like there's someone down in austin who invited all these people you know, he wants to have 500 people in his church and we'll lay hands on you if you're sick with the coronavirus. That's a great idea. You know, we, we had 47 people get coronavirus from a church service. Right. Well, just like that thing we were talking about uh, there down in Texas where they uh, told them not to do the vaccine and then here they go, everybody's getting sick from it. Well, it was Kenneth Copeland, wasn't it? What in his yeah, church? It was, it was Kenneth Copeland again. He's one of the worst people yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't he the same guy who was out? We we see a thing on him. He's reaching out towards the camera, and his hands all yeah. wet, and he's praying. Yeah, that's, his hands all wet. Yep. And he's he's blessing people of the coronavirus. Is that that's the same guy, that's right? Him. Make that's sure. him. Okay. That's the same guy. His uh, he had a a follower who was dying of cancer, who also happened to be a lottery winner, <laughs> and oh. so she oh. gave. Uh, an Man. undisclosed fortune to this guy. Uh, his, it, his her own family, the, this lottery winner, their family was has never determined how much money uh, she gave him, but they say that that she is the reason that he bought his twenty million dollar Citation jet. That that this really? was paid for with the lottery winnings from this one person, who just wanted to be cured of cancer. Hmm. So she dies of cancer, and Kenneth Copeland now has a jet. Yeah, they never make those with stipulations. You, yeah. you know, I mean, I, all right, so I've got this idea. I had this idea a long time ago. I've joked about it several times about selling soul swords. So, Aaron, when you die, you don't want to um, go to heaven and then have to come back and kill us non-believers with a shitty, crappy sword. So I'm mm -hmm. going to sell you a soul sword. And what happens is you send me $500, and I'm going to make this soul sword. 
Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. And, and an angel is going to make this soul sword for you and you alone. And when you die, you will have this soul sword. And then when, during Revelations, you will be able to come and slaughter all of the, the good people or the, the bad, wicked people here. Now, here's the catch, brother. I know, I know you have your doubts. What if it's not quality? What if it's not a good sword? So I've got a bell on my wall. And after you die, within half an hour, if you're not happy with your purchase, ring that bell and I'll give you all your money back. <laughs> you know, I, I have a friend named Ivan Stang <laughs> who invented the Church of the Subgenius, also known as the Church of Bob. The Church, okay. And his, his slogan is uh, you know, triple your money back. <laughs> um, you know, on a lifetime guarantee, right? Yeah, you, you, you will, you will, uh, eternal salvation or triple your money back. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is wonderful because you have to die to get your refund. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I, I had a friend, uh, I still have this friend, and now, and now that I'm not traveling anywhere anymore, I guess I can go down to this guy's house for a barbecue that was long overdue. I have a, an old buddy named Morbid because he was both into gothic metal and also uh, uh, horror movies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he kind of looks like Alice Cooper. But anyway, uh, this guy had to, had a beautiful thing about how to lend money. He wouldn't lend you money. Mm -hmm. uh, he would he would buy your soul. Oh, okay. So he made out this contract. If you, wanted, if you wanted $20 from this guy, he would write out this contract and prick your finger in blood so that you had to stamp it with a bloody, <laughs> bloody fingerprint. Does he have like upper he, limits? I mean, you know, my soul is worth more than twenty dollars. <laughs> it's going to cost him, <laughs> but I'm willing to negotiate. Well, yeah, yeah, people would often say, you know, this is like the 1980s; everything was cheaper, and people would often say, "Hey, can I lend? Can I borrow twenty bucks?" So, no, you can't. But <laughs> we walk out of here with twenty dollars. This is how we do it. Hmm. And I, I just loved that because he, he, there was a lot of people that would go way out of their way to make sure they paid him back. So they could get that piece of paper back. Of course, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, with Christians, it's it's often joked about that sort of thing. They like you can do anything, and they can just pray it away later. Oh, you know, I'm, I get forgiven. I get, but yeah, something like that kind of seems a little more. Uh, well, see, I'm just ensured that I, I that I can't be damned because you know morbid oats my soul already, and we we saw that in an episode <laughs> of The Simpsons. I see. I see. I see. Maybe that's what I ought to do then. Just sell it off to the highest bit, highest bidder. Oh, it's bitter. Uh, no beer, though. Let me see if I can get this going here. Um, I just want to, again, shout out and say thank you to everyone in the chat. We'll go here in a minute. I'll let you all run. It's been an hour, but if you want to stay, if you got a few minutes, I have a couple of more questions um, that I would like to distract you with, if possible. Uh, primarily, to be honest, just to keep the show going, really. <laughs> um, how long have you, what, or what have you got going forward? What's up next before, for Arn Ra? Well, I don't even know because everything got canceled. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Well, let me change the question then. Since everything <laughs> got canceled, you, so you don't know yet. You're not sure. I haven't figured it out. Yeah, well, I'm, in, I'm still the, – the, the next thing that hasn't been canceled yet is uh, I'm supposed to do something in June. I'm supposed to speak, I think, in Baltimore. I'm going to be in Baltimore in mid, in mid to late June, and I'm, I'm supposed to do a debate – online while i'm up there and i'm also supposed to speak while i'm up there i don't i don't yet know the details about all that yeah whether or not that'll still go. i was supposed to go to american atheist over in uh or i was trying to yeah we, we me and the wife had already prayed over it and everything <laughs> and yeah, we were in july i'm supposed to be at the the the, the, the ark encounter again okay but but I, again all of that is tentative yeah I don't know. I can't remember what, what was August, but I know in September I'm supposed to be back in the UK. And there's a, there's two or three things that are they're lined up in the one up in, for that week or two. Hmm. But no no solid details because it's too far in the future. Well, I'm really hoping well, we can. I was going to say you're welcome to come on our show uh, if you want the History Voyagers, and um, we're, we're doing our first. Uh, series on Gobekli Tepe. I don't know if you probably heard of that. And so we're, we're doing we're doing 10 videos on all kinds of different facets of Gobekli Tepe. Yeah. So. It's, so far, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm actually working on the first video now. Uh, we've recorded it and we're going to produce it. They're scripted videos. They're not live. Um, 
nothing like that. Uh, but I think that's way that's way after your time, isn't it, Aaron? You're more into the paleontology old stuff, way old. Am I wrong? Or? Yeah, it's it's funny how how many Americans don't understand the difference between archaeology and paleontology. Yes, oh, I understand the, the same difference. thing. Yeah, you know, and and that's why they think that carbon dating is used for, <laughs> right. for paleontology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my my favorite period was the one that I just explored, uh, mm -hmm. being being the Permian. Yeah, cool. I bet that was such a. How how long have you been wanting to do that? Go specifically there for Africa. Well, I, yeah, there there are there's a paleo or there there's a Permian exposure here in Texas in the Permian Basin. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that's all marine. Oh right. Uh, and there the only places where you can get any shoreline in the Permian uh, in in the United States. It's a, it's a going to be early Permian, so you get like Demetrodon, hmm. and I was more interested at although I love Demetrodons, uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm more interested in later like Thrinaxodon and 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 that era, right. because it was a complete ecosystem of mm -hmm. all sorts of of and we we had the, their version of the bison, <laughs> their version, ah, shut up dog. <laughs> Their version of the bison, their version of deer, their version of gophers, mm -hmm. you know, of course, their major predators and all of that. You you had this this whole system, but it was completely different animals filling those niches. And the crocodile, for example, their their version of a crocodile was a salamander, thirty feet long. Wow! Really? That's <laughs> <laughs> a big lizard. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Imagine being eaten by a newt. Uh, yeah, a really, really big, really big, really? angry newt. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I knew that you you were into that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm actually from the Permian Basin. Uh, are you from the Permian Basin, too? I heard you were from that region. I'm from Midland, Odessa. Where I... Well, I lived in El Paso for a long time, but, oh, but okay. no, I'm not not from the Permian Basin. Gotcha, gotcha. Because we, uh, somebody, I don't remember who I was talking to. We were talking about you and we were talking about whether or not you would, actually what we talked about was the smell of the Permian Basin as you drive through it going from El Paso to Texas or to Dallas or something like that. So Interesting thing about the, the Permian Basin in Texas, like where you talk about Midland, Odessa mm -hmm. and, and the place I just was in South Africa, they're both scorched earth, parched damn desert. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last time I was in, in, in Odessa in the summertime, I felt like I was walking through a microwave. Yeah, it was it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. I put in 20 years in the oil field out radiation. there. Radiation. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you all stopping by. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Aaron Raw. Thank you very much. I, I'm very appreciate you coming on the show. And thanks, Jay, for coming in and stepping in for uh, Jim. I got to tell everybody again, it was my fault, not Jim's fault. If I can get a hold of Jim, I'll get him on the show again later. Um, but thank you all for showing. Thank you, everybody in the chat who showed up. Um, Arn, naturally, I'm going to have to try to get you on the show again in the future. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun. Yep. Been good. All right, everybody. Um, take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you again. Thank you for watching the show. A special shout out to my gold level Patreon supporters, the Blazing Wizard Pope, Ian Davenport, Cindy Plaza, and tons of mice. Thank you, and have a great day.